Hello and welcome to the GAK.co.uk Guitar Shop Podcast. I am your host, Mark Packham. Who is with me this evening? Hello, my name's Jay. I'm the assistant manager here in the guitar store. Hello, my name's Matt and I'm the manager. And I'm Joe and I'm here for bass-related things. Uh, and joining us uh, on Skype this evening is um, Rebecca Dirks. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. Hello. So, <laughs> um, how are you doing? Great. Good, good. Uh, also worth mentioning that Matt is joining us on Skype from London this week. Um, Via the power of technology. Yes. Basically couldn't be bothered to travel down on the train. Yes, that's <laughs> part of the reason why. <laughs> good. Um, that's the only reason why. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Rebecca, thanks for coming on. Sure. Um, I thought for people who don't know who you are, um, it might be worth just reiterating her, like what you do, I guess. Um, and and then I thought we could talk about how you kind of got into guitar and kind of ended up in, in this world, really. Okay. Um, right now, I am working for a digital magazine called Tone Report. It's put out by um, Pro Guitar Shop, which a lot of people on the internet know. Andy, who does all of the pedal demos for them. And so we started this uh, digital magazine for iOS and Android. It's really awesome. But what I do is a daily gear news show um, on their YouTube channel where basically I run, run down all the you know, gear news releases. And if it's a slow gear news day, we'll talk about some music stuff too. Um, before that, I did. I worked for Premier Guitar Magazine. I did rig rundowns and stuff. So uh, you may have seen some of those. It's uh, We've all been really impressed by Time Report and just, um, yeah, just a guitar magazine that's kind of... Um, in addition to to the regular print magazines, just worth reading, you know. Thanks. Um, I just wondered uh, if we could start off really with how you sort of got into guitar personally and, and kind of playing <laughs> playing guitar. Um, when, when did you start? What did you start on? Um, what what kind of inspired you to to get playing? Well, you know what? I don't play guitar. Oh, really? See, um, no. I, when I did in high school, I uh, I got a, a purple Strat and I played in my friend's basement, and we would you know just dick around and think that we were really cool and uh, I kind of I've kind of got out of it and I was always really into music um, but I don't I don't play right now I know it's crazy it's I, not that crazy not really <laughs> um, <laughs> Jay barely plays yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's got two chords down I think that's not bad yeah I mean you know give me another 20 years I might have another four or five it'll be fine yeah, up to <laughs> status quo standards well it's maybe. I guess you know uh, uh, for us working around guitars all the time it's kind of uh, it's difficult to get that that time into to to playing you know um, no i think i think the most important thing is is that yeah, you don't necessarily have to be a player to be into it which is something that i tell myself every day which <laughs> completely justifies why i've got so many guitars but don't actually play guitar in a band or anything you know i think i i, I think that's i i think that's great i think you know whatever so, yeah, I mean, I find myself like geeking out over like these pedal videos and people coming out with this, all this super nerdy stuff. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I'm like, why do I even like this? But yeah. I do, so <laughs> it works. How did you, if you, you know, you're saying that you don't play guitar. How did you end up in the kind of world of sort of guitar journalism and, and working for Premier Guitar and, and things like that? Well, Premier Guitar is published in Iowa, and I went to the University of Iowa. Um, I was always super into music, went to a lot of concerts and stuff in, um, in high school and college. And um, I saw a, just a listing for an internship at a guitar magazine. I'm like, oh, I like music. I'll do this. And I just got in and um, just worked really hard. There were when we first started the magazine, Premier Guitar. I mean, there were it was me, uh, the managing editor, and one other guy on the editorial staff, and that was like it. So we just like went through it every single issue. I read every word in every single issue. I wrote a lot, and. And I started learning about it. And I just, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of a nerd in a lot of different ways. And I got into the really geeky aspects of like the gear geek dumb stuff. Um, so I, I went from there and, and they ended up hiring me full time. And I cha changed positions there a few times. And then obviously I left this summer, but that's kind of how I got into it. Just a lucky, lucky internship. And I happened to just fall in love with the whole industry. And how do you find, uh, in terms of, Kind of talking about the stuff without uh, actually being a player. Um, it's, it's difficult for us sometimes when we're kind of talking to customers and stuff and doing what we do, what we do on the podcast, like trying to um, talk about what a guitar feels like and things like that. Um, how how does that work? You know, if you if you don't get your hands on the guitar as such. 
Um, you know, it can be tough sometimes. I spent a lot of years just doing a lot of proofing, reading, and editing, and a lot of research in terms of understanding exactly what all the little details mean. And I read a lot of forums and sure. a lot of, yeah, um, YouTube comments. And I kind of try to understand, I don't know, I guess I, I always liken it to uh, sports reporting. You know, you have Aaron Andrews and things like that. You know, they didn't play. Yeah, sure. Well, that's, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's a reference that translates for us, but yeah. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> American football, right. Who okay. are we talking to? <laughs> yeah, a rugby. <laughs> but, you know, like a, like a female sports reporter, they're not going to have played it. But, um, but you almost get a different perspective because you're not coming in with your own biases. Sure. Of, of okay, well, I think that this is how something should sound. You know, you just come in with, with a, a blank slate. Do you, think, kind do you of think that makes your stuff more, a bit more... Uh, without bias? Do you think that makes your stuff a bit more accessible to other people? Because, you know, it, a lot of the things you sometimes read are people, you know, being super, super nerdy about these things. Um, <laughs> and, you know, sometimes, I guess if you're coming at it at a slightly more, um, I don't, you know, not layman's point of view, but, you know, from, from a non sort of techie point of view, I, I guess that, I mean, that's that's kind of always the way I've tried to, to look at it is to not be so... Um, jargony about these things and just just say yeah th these are really cool this is why I think it's really cool maybe you think it's really cool too I mean it, it, do you think that that helps that has helped sort of you know you throughout your career doing that sort of thing I think it does help I think a lot of um, people who are at the position where they're working at guitar magazines um, by and large have been playing for a long long time they are really deep into like the gear knowledge some of them are really deep into the theory knowledge as well and a lot of people who are reading guitar magazines are not there um, and so I think maybe it does help that, you know, if I'm, if I'm in a rig rundown talking to somebody, um, I might ask something a little bit more basic that a 30 year guitar magazine veteran wouldn't even ask because yeah. they know the answer to, but you're talking, you know, you, you might have a guy who's been playing guitar for six months or two years who just doesn't know that either. Yeah. That's sort of almost what we've done on the podcast, although, uh, you know, we've been working with guitars for a little while. Um, we, I think we try and come at it from from that sort of angle as well. Um, in you know, we take questions and stuff like that. Uh, it's just starting almost from like begin the beginner side of things, which yeah, a lot of guitar magazines just don't really do. I don't think they kind of expect a base level of knowledge to begin with. Right, and I think it's just intrinsic in the fact that everybody working for them is is so deep and steeped in the knowledge that they don't even think about the fact that somebody might not know something. Sure, yeah. sure. I mean, it can be. Um, I was going to say it can be quite easy, like especially you know when we're trying to sell something to someone in store, to just kind of go over the top in what you're explaining without really thinking about it. You know, in terms of like tone woods and how things vary in terms of the sound. Just sometimes you just don't think that someone who's only been playing six months might not really understand that at all. Right. You take for granted that you know a certain a certain wood's going to be brighter than another, and and they just have no idea. Definitely, definitely. Um, so let's just talk a little bit more about um, Tone Report. In terms of the actual, uh, how people can access it and, and what it actually is really. Um, what are the sort of things that you cover um, and what's the sort of layout? Okay, so Tone Report is, it's a digital magazine only. It's, we're not gonna do a print ever. Um, but it's right now it's on iOS and Android. And we're really working very hard on a web version. Everybody's always asking when they can see it on their browser. and. I'm totally with you, um, and that'll be there really soon. It's going to come out in January, um, but it it functions really amazingly as like a tablet magazine is my favorite way to do it. You can read it on your phone as well, um, but it's definitely the best um, kind of fit for tablet of any of the guitar mags out right now because it's designed for the tablet. So you know you can read it and scroll through. You know where you're reading and if you tap the screen or double tap the screen you can see the picture behind it um, and then there you can just tap a little button and play an audio clip or tap a little button and um, a video player comes up and it's all really seamless which is really nice and a lot of the ads have that in it too which is kind of funny because the first the first issue I got um, I was going through and I'm like all playing around and I realized oh wait I'm just watching videos on an ad what am I doing <laughs> because it's it's a really a lot of seamless multimedia integration which kind of makes sense coming from pro guitar shops since they just they got to be well known from their videos sure so. sure um oh what we cover sorry i missed that part. yeah, yeah. Um, a lot it's it's all really gear stuff um uh 
it's a number of gear uh, reviews. They do um, a lot of pedal reviews and some guitar and amp reviews, uh, manufacturer profiles, um, live gear spotlights, which is essentially like going and talking to somebody about the live gear that they're using, a lot of really picture heavy um, stuff like that. Shootouts, um, Brett Kingman does, uh, does, does some stuff. Uh, you may know him from YouTube. Sure. Uh, and he does shootouts. So it's all really gear related stuff. Yeah, what I've noticed that's quite good about Tone Report is um, is that you actually keep your ear to the ground quite a lot with uh, reviews going up on YouTube, as in private reviews. So, so if someone compares a couple of pedals, um, you can actually be kind of a resource for pointing people towards that review rather than you know having to trawl through the countless pages of YouTube looking for something. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Is that something that's been quite important? Is uh, kind of taking more of a kind of community focus and finding other people doing reviews and, and highlighting them, that sort of thing? Um, for the, you know, definitely for the show, for me, what I do every day with the daily news, it's all about kind of compiling what everybody else is doing. I mean, there are a lot of great sites and channels out there. So if they do something that's really cool, you know, I want to put it in the show because it's not just about promoting ourselves. And I get, I mean, there's a lot of people doing stuff and if there are people who are going to spend all day on the internet who are going to see all of that without watching my show but the the idea of the show and compiling all that is like if you don't have hours upon hours every day you can come and watch this three minutes and and find stuff without having to really put in the effort yourself i guess definitely Definitely. I put in the effort for you. <laughs> you're, basically, you're doing our work for us, which is greatly appreciated. By yeah, and you can go into the links and the just just click a link in the video description, and then you don't you don't have to like have a, a fancy RSS reader or like a crazy Twitter feed like I have to have. Yeah. <laughs> um, so next week, um, or this week, I should say, um, Nam is coming up, um, oh, yeah. and you mentioned that you're not going to be there for the first time in, in a while. Um, yes. But you've got an idea of the sort of stuff that's going to be there. Um, just wanted to talk about things that you know that might be there that aren't uh, embargoed um, and also stuff that you're looking forward to and stuff that you hope that might come out there. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I think I, I know as much as everybody knows um, and anything that I don't know I can't talk about. But I actually really don't know that much of the unembargoed stuff. I think the biggest thing that I'm kind of looking forward to seeing unveiled is the Line 6 amp because they've just been you know doing these this like slow release and it looks to be very tech heavy it looks to be an app and it's all cloud based and I know a lot of people hate that stuff but I find it very interesting and very intriguing at least to see you know how good can they make this sound um, and that they just got bought by Yamaha which whatever that means um, you know will that factor into this amp or not I don't know uh, so that's interesting to me and the Supro amps that are coming out I'm really looking forward to hearing we kind of know all the details on them now but I'm looking forward to actually hearing some demos of them Sure. The, the, I think that Line 6 press conference, I think it's on the first day. Um, I, we're, I think we're going to be there. It just looks like it's going to be, like you say, really exciting. And how does the kind of partnership with Yamaha or the, you know, the, the buy-up by Yamaha kind of factor into, into all that? And interesting to see where Line 6 are going to go next. Right. I mean, and are, are they going to combine product lines? It, you know, they said that they're not, but how does how does... Line six's technology affects the THR amps, or are those just gone? You know, sure. And, and, you know how to, how is the Line six, say, very X technology going into the Yamaha guitar line? We'll see, I guess. Definitely. And how about some stuff that's kind of uh, almost like pre NAM stuff, like the new Gibsons and things like that? Have you been impressed by the stuff Gibson are looking to do this year? Um, you know, Gibson. <laughs> Uh, they, I think they took it a little bit safe this year. Um, they've got some new colors and putting mini tune on a lot of things. Um, but they, they definitely on their line early. It's really nice looking. They have, you know, everything's really nice, but they didn't really seem to be taking a whole lot of, you know, massive chances, which is actually probably a good thing for them because uh, people don't tend to react really well to them taking a lot of massive chances. So. It's probably going to be a good year for them from that standpoint. Yeah, we we sort of agreed, really. We said that last year actually was pretty good when they did a bit of a revamp and um, focused a bit more on the Les Pauls and the SGs and dropped out of the kind of more pointy stuff. Um, and yeah. this this year it kind of looks like they're, they're just building on that. Right. Um, and and that, then putting mini tunes on everything. Yes, <laughs> sure, sure. Um, Oh, the other brand that we kind of that we deal with, deal with a lot here is uh, is Ibanez, and I don't know if you've seen any of the new Ibanez stuff. Um, just I wondered if you've managed to cast your eyes over that and get some thoughts about what they're doing this year, and if there's anything that really stood out from that. 
You know, I haven't seen too much of the Ibanez stuff except for the um, new Tube Screamer, um, but I haven't seen much of the guitars, actually, so you oh, guys did, know more than I do. Uh, yeah, I wasn't even aware there was a new Tube Screamer, actually. Um, Matt? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it yesterday, Of actually. course he did. Of course, <laughs> of course <laughs> I did. Spending all my time. Um, yeah, the 808DX, is it? Or the 808X? It's a, an 808 DX. with an, a switchable boost as well. Oh, um, you sh yeah, I saw this the other day. But it's um, it looks like the 808 HW, the hand wired one that they do, um, but just much bigger. But actually, there's some really cool pedals coming out, which I'm sure we'll get onto in a bit. But there's a lot. <laughs> some I'm the, currently some trying the... to work my way through everything that's coming out, and there's a lot right. coming out. Some of the new guitar stuff that uh, Ibanez had on their new catalogue looks really good as well. There's a new Noodle signature, isn't there? Which yeah. is, like, I'm not sure how timely that is. Like, well, it's, I mean, it's not really, <laughs> is it? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's a decade 2000, out. 2014 is 20 years since Smash was released. <laughs> so, it looks like I a cool mean, guitar. <laughs> like, no, I love stuff. that you knew that off the top of your head. Yeah, it came out the day after Kurt Cobain killed himself. Oh, right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, Matt, um, what, um, what pedals have you seen that uh, we'll hopefully see next week that look interesting? Well, there's um, so there's a new EHX pedal called the EH Extortion, which is like um, an overdrive with a, an inbuilt um, sort of DI. Okay. So I'm assuming it's their sort of take on maybe something like a Sans amp, but you could probably use it with guitar as well. Oh, um, really? With a boost switch, which can be remotely accessed as well. Um, they've got a new reverb, the Holy Grail Max, um, and they're doing a new fuzz as well, which is based on... Um, based on the maestro fuzz that um, Keith Richards used for Can't Get No Satisfaction. Um, so there's some new MXR pedals as well. They're doing a Univibe, they're doing um, a, which looks a, really nice. They're doing a bass they're doing preamp a non as well. Dunlop, um, a non um, Gin Dunlop, oh, what you call it? Joe Bonamassa, they're doing a oh, uh, the, non the fet drive. Fet drive. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of cool. There's some new way huge pedals coming out. They're doing an Echoplex preamp as well, um, which I'm assuming there's kind their kind of take on maybe a different type of microamp, um, just but you know designed to be more like the sort of the other pedals out there at the moment that are replicating that sort of Echoplex Echo type preamp. Um, so yeah, there's definitely going to be some good stuff. I think there's some new Crybabies as well. Yeah, definitely. I saw a Clive McCoy, I think, announced. Uh, Rebecca, have you had a preview or any insight into any of these bits? Um, you kind of covered all of the stuff. I think I know. I think the uh, I think the Univibe is just the same as the Hendrix one without the Hendrix graphics. Um, yeah, because they I think they sold out the Hendrix one so quick, and then everyone asked for one. And they went, "Oh, we we just haven't got any more to make." So I think they've just thought that well, must be a smart move to build some more. <laughs> yeah. For people who don't want, who want something a little fuddler on their board as well. Yeah. Is there anything there that kind of stands out to you as you know could be possible gear of the year for this year? Is there anything that looks particularly exciting? Um, I, you know, I think Electro Harmonics. I'm interested in hearing a lot of that stuff. I, they're they're going to have a really really big year. I think they're coming out with like ten at Nam. I think ten or eleven pedals is what they said, and. Um, I've, you know, the stuff that they've already announced has gone over really well. You know, the soul food, you can get, you know, spend like $65 on on your clan approximation. So I think I think that they're going to be a big one to watch in terms of the gear, the best gear from the show. They have so much coming out and they seem to be have their heads in the right places with that. So Definitely. Like, things like the uh, the soul food, we, we've had them in stock but we've not had any that I can actually even try because they've all been pre-sold so the, I mean the video stuff looks really impressive and hopefully we'll have our video up as soon as I can actually get one to make a video on it um, but yeah the, again last last year seemed to be a really good year for electronics just doing a load of, of different stuff and not just building on the pedals they already do you know not just putting right. like a small stone in a different box or a bigger box or um, or you know adding a, a, another feature to stuff they already do they actually seem to be thinking about what people are after right and then, and they're trying things with the that next step series that I'm not sure that that's really caught on um, but I, they seem to be sticking with it so it's there's potential there definitely uh, again I've not had a chance to try one of the slammies yet but um, they look kind of interesting <laughs> definitely right. definitely um, 
is there anything else you think that um, we should be talking about before I go to the, to the show next this week? Um, anything else worth checking out? One thing I would say for pedal wise, you should go to the Pigtronics because I think they've got a new rotary oh. pedal coming out. Oh yeah, yep. def- definitely. Also, Doyle's going to be there. Doyle, <laughs> Doyle from the Misfits is going to be there. So this is the, you need to go and check out Doyle. This is the only thing that you're actually excited about. I'm sure. <laughs> I really want to meet Doyle. I'm really bummed. I'm not going to be there. So if you can, if you can, uh, if you could orchestrate getting a selfie with Doyle that he posts up on his Instagram, that would, that, I'd really appreciate that. I'll see what I can do. Okay, definitely. Ben, Benny Sheehan's going to be there for Rotor Sound. Oh yeah, good. I'm not going to try and meet oh, Billy Sheehan. Have, you really should. You should get a photo to. next to Billy Sheehan just as, so just just to annoy Joe. As much as I <laughs> as much as I like Billy Sheehan, I would imagine the line is going to be quite long. And uh, as it's mainly for your satisfaction, Joe, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> okay, <laughs> definitely. Um, okay, uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk to? Have you got any questions for Rebecca or anything like that? Um, what um what sort of spurred on? sort of going to work for Pro Guitar Shop and, and decide to do it weekly because I think it's it's a really good idea to go weekly because so many magazines now just seem so far behind because of everything that comes out online. Was that sort of what spurred on the decision to sort of do it really? Um, I think I, I'm totally excited about the weekly format. I think it's awesome because it's so much more um, digestible as well. You're right about things being behind with the monthly format, but beyond that, like you come out with this monthly thing that's full of so much stuff and, um, you know, life moves so fast. You, you get the magazine and you get through maybe what you can get through that day or the next day and then, you know, there's six different things coming at you on the internet. So with this, it's like, okay, here's five stories a week or plus some reviews and you can get through that really quickly and then wait till the next week and it's just it's kind of a a better way to get content I think in in the fast paced everything coming at you on the internet all the time world that we're in Um, that's not why I did it Um, I think it's awesome you know it just happened to they happened to be launching this magazine at the time when I had left Premier Guitar so it wasn't that I actually um, left for the magazine but it was you know I, I spoke with them and they told me what they were doing. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. That's amazing. You know, there's a lot of stuff that can be done because you're not tied down to a print format that I think we've only scratched the surface of. So the mm-hmm. concept's awesome. Um, and well, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, especially for ty- times like now, like NAM, it just means that you can stay so much up to date. I mean, the magazines, especially here, like Guitarist and Talk Guitar, you don't see reviews of any NAM gear until like March, April time. Right. And, and you're only then, then you're only really reading it with with something like that. It's just it's you know there's so many videos and so many people filming while they're out there. It's, just, it's nice to stay updated, really, especially in store now, so that so many I say customers come in and say, oh, have you seen this? And we're like, no, you know, it's it's because <laughs> people you know people get the information way before anything does in the magazines, and sometimes way before the stores even see a product in store. Right, and uh, and you know the mag the. It, it being attached to a retail is, is interesting, but one thing is that they, they do get gear faster than magazines get gear. I mean, the stores get stuff in faster than magazines did. You know, we would see a pro guitar shop demo before we could get something in at Premier Guitar. So it's neat because that kind of um, early access has allowed us to get some great reviews in, like really early. Um, mm. So it's great, and with you know, like you said, like right now with Nam, that's where kind of the daily show comes into play, and it's. It's driving me absolutely crazy every single day, but um, but we can you know instead of waiting you know for a week, even the weekly magazine or a monthly magazine, it's like every day I'm like okay here's what here's you know what people are talking about today, and tomorrow something might change. I might be saying something that's completely wrong, and tomorrow I get the real story. But you know it's to the minute at least. Um, I just have one question, um, and then I think we'll wrap it up because you need to go and prepare your show, and we need to get uh-huh. on. Oh wait, Joe's shouting at me. He's got a question. What are you going to say? Uh, is yours going to be more topical than mine? I don't know what your question is. So. Mine was going to be, out of everyone that you've done a rig rundown with, who is your favourite? That's the same, same as my question, oh. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is a really, really hard one because there's different reasons for things to be my favourite. I think I, my my usual answer is uh, Nels Klein, and I'll stick with that because, um, I don't know, he has just this really pure love for his instrument and the tone, and tone really, and how... Um, how each of the little pieces of his signal chain came together for the sound and the way that he would talk about it and show them off. Um, it was just this really 
pure appreciation and enjoyment for what he was doing, which was really great. And it was it was kind of a crazy one because it was when he was with Wilco and we were doing it and it went on forever. I think it was like 45 minutes and it's amazing. I love how long it is. But we're wrapping up and the whole band is like on stage waiting to sound check and I'm like sitting here and Jeff Tweedy's like right behind me I'm like do we need to end this now and now it just keeps going and I'm like hey, you know what if he's still going I'm gonna go with it but I was like oh my gosh Jeff Tweedy's going to hate me that's amazing yeah he seemed to know more what he was talking about than I I always thought it was funny when you do a rig rundown and you'd seem to know more than the uh than the the artist that you were talking about talking to like Victor yeah, Wooten who seemed to know more about his cable than anything else uh in his who was that uh Victor Wooten Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they, there are some guys uh, that that uh, like Dragon Force uh, Herman. It was just like knows everything, and Sam was just like, I do what Herman tells me. To do. <laughs> <laughs> so. What's just quickly? What's the most complex rig that you've covered doing the ring? Oh God, Vernon Reed. Okay, Vernon Vernon Reed without a shadow of a doubt. I was like. My brain hurt at the end of that, but he was a super cool, super nice guy. Like, and he went through it. He explained it. I thought really well, and he was really chatty. And then you went over to Doug, and Doug is just hilarious. And um, you know, this larger than life character. So it was like, here's Vernon, the mad scientist, and Doug, like this uh, bombastic human being. It was it was a fun one, but man, his setup because he has every technology. He yeah. has them all. So is that like kind of like wireless thing, sending signal or routing things, or what was so what was so full on about it? Um, it was I, okay. He had like two laptops, I think, set up, and he was. I'm I'm trying to. I should actually like pull it up as a cheat sheet. But he had um, everything was going simultaneously. So he had like a um, uh, uh, like computer simulations going simultaneously to like floorboards going simultaneously to pedals and it was all running like parallel through all these crazy like MIDI and switching and it was nuts. I, I'm, <laughs> sounds I'm awesome. Yeah, man, really it sounds like you're ter- terribly, But I'm like, <laughs> you know, like if, if it doesn't work, where do you even start in troubleshooting that is what I'm, I was looking at. Like all of these plugins and outs and cables and it's like wow, that's a that's a headache. But he he's just he's like that. He's really into it, and he he knows what's going on in it. And I guess that's what matters. Matt, that sounds like your dream rig. Yeah, well, I've been spending most of the day programming my MIDI foot controller, and I'm just thinking maybe I should just plug into my amp. I just, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes maybe, well, that that would just, maybe that would just be easier. That <laughs> that know, actually but. is the other most complicated one was uh, um, somebody who probably should have had a MIDI foot controller was Josh Klinghoffer, who had a billion pedals and uh, his tech Ian is awesome and he was like oh, I try to get him to do a mini foot controller but he just he just has to have all of them there and that that was a really expansive pedal board it was funny about that because actually I think that pedal board used the switching system which is built by a guy who lives in Brighton um, so yeah bright onion pedals I think yep. he does like a load that, of switching stuff yeah 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 he's just um, he's just down the road from us actually Okay, guys, um, I think let's not keep you any longer. You need to go and do the show. We need to get back and actually work on the shop floor. So um, <laughs> thanks very much for talking to us. Where, yeah, thank you. where can people find you on the internet uh, and where can they find Tone Report? Okay, so you can go to ToneReport.com. There's not much there right now, but uh, it will have the web version there. You can also go to uh, YouTube.com slash ProGuitarShopDemos, um, and that's where the daily show is. And... There are links to download the um, Tone Report Digital Magazine, both on the YouTube and the web address. I can't believe I didn't mention this, but it's free. It's totally free, and it will forever be free. So that you you can subscribe to the magazine without there's no there's no charge for it. So Sweet. and and how about you? If people want to get in touch with you or find out what you're up to, is Twitter the best place? Twitter really is the best place. I have a Facebook profile, um, and sometimes people message me there, and I'll reply to them in like three weeks. Um, Twitter (laughs) is much faster. It's just Rebecca underscore Dirks. Amazing. Um, And guys, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, If you need to get hold of me for any bass-related things, you can uh, can tweet me at Yosef underscore 900. And I'm uh, J-A-Y-B-M-1. Very easy. Matt, how about you? How about you, Matt? Where can people get find you? Uh, you can uh, you can tweet me Matt underscore Knighty. That's Knight with S I E on the end, or email me Matt dot Knight at gak dot co uk. And I really want to talk about new Nam pedals. 
all the NAM pedals. <laughs> Send them my way. All of them. Um, and I just really want... Pe- I tried to get this going earlier, but no- nothing. I didn't get anything. I really want to see pictures of cats on amps. Cats on uh, amps. I tweeted a picture of my cat on my amp, and no, they, I got very little response. So, Oh, you- I can help you with this. Oh, excellent. Cool. I'm into it. Let's, let's, I'm, let's... I'm sending one your way in two minutes. Amazing. Into uh, it. Yes. Fine. Good. Cats, cats on amps is what I want. I don't, I, if you've got a dog, then you can keep your photo to yourself. Was... Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I want to see. Yeah, I want to see pets on amps. That's what I want. Um, well, if uh, if anyone's got any uh, pictures of pets on amps, either send them Jay's way, or you can send them to the shop um, at gak underscore co underscore uk on Twitter, uh, facebook.com forward slash gak music, um, or you can tweet me directly uh, at mark underscore random. Um, Rebecca, thanks very much for talking to us. Um, no, thanks and for having keep, me. Keep in touch. All right, will do. Thanks very much. Cheers, Rebecca. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.